Stop it. Uh, I tell you what. Well, good morning. And uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of bother last night. A lot of bother last night. Uh, a bit of building work. Uh, there's been building work going on uh, behind my house for 452 years now. And uh, um, very little scant respect given to uh, the regulations about uh, when you should finish building work. And um, it's... I'm pretty sure there's no planning permission there. And uh it's 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 been going on and on and so last night I had to I had to do the thing. Um I had to go round and knock on the door and say, you know, and uh it was about twenty past nine at night and the guy was hammering so hard that the walls were shaking in my house. And uh uh I said, uh, hi there. He was like, All right. I said, Were you just doing some building work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know what time you're supposed to finish building work? Yeah, 8.30. Uh, no, 6. 6 o'clock. You're supposed to... No, it's 8.30. Okay, what time is it now? Anyway. Love all that. Hate all that. Hate all that. It's kind of easier as you get older, isn't it? You get a certain certain presence. certain command. Um... But it's a problem, you know, there, there's so much kind of antisocial stuff around where I live. It's this kind of deprived area and it's a, oh, sorry, I should probably go and get that. Hello? Uh, hello? hello there, sorry to bother you, it's community support. Oh, brilliant. Hello, hello. Um, we've had a few reports from your street yeah. uh, saying there's some antisocial behaviour. Yeah, there's like Is fly, that right? Yeah, there's like fly tipping. Fly tipping. Yeah, and drugs. Uh, sort yeah, of and the sort of be, drug. Okay. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, We've talked to the council mm -hmm. and they've got no budget for uh, the okay. CCTV cameras uh, okay. that y you requested. Yeah. Um, but we're actually trying a new scheme that we found to be much more effective. Right. Uh, what we're doing is installing middle class people oh. in sort of one house in 10 to 15. Right. And we're finding that the results are actually really good. Yeah. Um, so we got there's there's a choice of if you'd be interested in it uh, there's a choice of three now you can okay. have a, a pensioner yeah. uh, she's about seventy right. um, and the thing with them is that they're they're very vigilant you know they're yeah. great because they're just there all the time yeah. and they're they're really they're happy to go over uh, and hector people right. um, but there's there's always a sort of a bit of a downside and, and the downside with them is that they will spend quite a long time telling you all about the problems with the Labour Party right. uh, and you'll have to sort of listen to that yeah. um, okay. interestingly old school Marxist lefty but with some startlingly right-wing social attitudes okay um, so that's the pensioner yeah. um, Next choice is a harried couple with two under two. Um, okay. And one of them is going to look at you as he empties the bins with ill-concealed contempt bordering on hostility. Uh, they're just right. in a very bad place at the moment. Yeah. Um, they will get things done, but with quite a bad attitude. And, of course, you may end up being complained about if you interfere with the bedtimes of their little ones. Uh, OK, sure. Um, um, or we've got a middle-aged gay couple with a rescue greyhound. Oh, yeah. Can we get, us, can we get sorry, one of those? No, I'd no, love to get gone. one of those. They've all gone. There's a huge waiting list for that one. All right, well, look, I'll pop you on the list. Someone yeah. will be in touch, okay. and we'll see you soon if you haven't moved. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks ever so much. You can watch that. Check it yeah. on 07862. 07862. 032. 032. Six, five, four. Well, we've had some great guests on this new series of uh, Not Today. Thank you, haven't we? Uh, and we've got an absolute legend who's sort of taking over for a little bit. Uh, it's his own slot. Um, uh, I, I'm going to introduce him with a jingle. It's a legend. Martin Kellner's Kiths. Yes, I've always wanted my own slot. Uh, yes, fantastic. Um, well, we're going to uh, interview a very, very special guest who we've uh, spoken to before. Um, you'll be aware uh, of uh, the popular entertainer Alvin Stardust. 
And it was seen on the front pages of all the papers this morning that it's been revealed that uh, Alvin Stardust, before becoming a huge pop star in the hit parade, as we like to say, uh, before doing that, uh, he around the club scene of his native Leicestershire, um, he used to box kangaroos. Uh, it was a very, very popular act, actually, in those days, you know, in all sorts of areas, um, the kangaroo boxing thing. Very few people, it's a sort of area of entertainment that's almost disappeared. Uh, very few people remember it, but I'm delighted to say I do have with me a guest who remembers that era. Uh, and I'd like to say a very good morning and a warm welcome, and, and thanks for getting up this time in the morning. Uh, it's Dora Dale. Uh, Dora, good morning to you. Hello, good morning, Martin. And yes. Thank you for getting me up this morning. It's my pleasure, my pleasure and privilege. Now, Dora, um, a lot of people obviously can't remember this era mm -hmm. where these sort of acts, I suppose we call them speciality acts, were going on in, uh, well, working men's clubs, cabaret clubs, but you do oh, remember. Oh, absolutely, and I, I remember little Alvin Stardust, and of course he, he did it originally, he just did it for fun. It mm. was only when uh, a, a talent booker spotted him and said, you could make some money out of that, stoving kangaroos' heads in. Which he used to do as just a sort of a weekend thing. The first rule of kangaroo fight club is punch them as hard and fast mm. as you can because they're like dynamite, those things. And uh, he had a wonderful time, but it has sparked an interest you know people are always looking mm. for the next new thing and mm. boxer sizing is so popular and yes, i yes. i have heard a rumor simply because i said it out loud that peloton are bringing out the new rubox which is a virtual kangaroo right you stand in in the corner of your living room mm. and look at while you're watching antiques roadshow thinking i should do that I should do that. I never do that. No. But everyone and, was at it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, people have forgotten, haven't they, boxing kangaroos. And, and were there other sort of animal... I mean, did, Absolutely. Because these days, if political correctness gone mad, there's no, no animals uh, involved anymore. Yeah, but I mean, you I, can't... Political correctness being what it is, you can't say political correctness has gone mad anymore. You no. have to say political correctness has... Severe anxiety. Anxiety problems, yeah. Mental health. And no, really. no one's talking about it, Mark. No, they're not. Are they? Not a living soul's talking about it. Dennis Healy. Yes. yes, Dennis Healy. Now, we know him primarily. Um, he's no longer with us, is he? But we very know sad, him. Very but very useful for libel reasons. Yes, precisely. Uh, so he's no longer with us, uh, Dennis Healy. Um, but we know him primarily as a politician, but he had a career before that. Yes, he did. People don't realise. Dennis Healy was a song and dance man and mm. rotten. And so he knew he needed a gimmick for his act. And he used to come on and do a, an amazing thing uh, with live eels. Um, yes. Dennis, Dennis Ely, he called it like with an apostrophe, Dennis Ely, mm. uh, the man who does the whole body flossing. So he'd introduce the eel orally, mm. but then orally, yeah. the entire length of the body, he, he, it, would, it, it would emerge as, as eels are wont to do. Mm. And then he would just to and fro, you see. You know, like <laughs> you see old men toweling themselves in the leisure yes. centre. Yeah, right, I just like so. that, but with an eel going well, ha, 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 the whole way through, like that. Yeah. Ha, 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 out the, hmm. And, and that, that was his act. Was it popular? I mean, no, did people God, take no, to it? No, people hated it. And that's why he went yes. into politics. <laughs> he carried on doing it, though, even though people Oh, did. yeah, and he, he, tried, he wanted to be the first person to floss body floss with an eel yes. in parliament yeah. but there's a very very old act uh, ab about it that means you, you're not allowed to you're not allowed it. to do it not with eels so but he um you know from doing that mm. he went into into politics and presumably you know people often say that politicians don't have a hinterland but this was his hinterland, oh no he had it? he had yeah. an eel poking out of his hinterland <laughs> it's unbelievable yeah. 
Yes, yeah, it's remarkable, yeah. really. Uh, and he was spotted, wasn't he, uh, at um, uh, well, one stage in his career by the Labour Party. And th they thought, yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy. He's the hot yeah. shot. He's 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 got he's got everything. He had the look. Yeah. He had the charisma. Mm. He's a great guy. And the eyebrows. He's got the eyebrows, and that became yeah. his trademark. But my yeah. goodness, how high those eyebrows went when the eels yes. finally emerged from his hinterland. Amazing, wasn't it, really? Lovely to watch. Yeah. And what sort of places did he play um, with this uh, oh, uh, act? Um, any, anywhere from um, alleyways yeah. to mosques. Uh, he uh, just it was really anywhere he could get whole... a booking. It was just he just didn't get. You know, he just wanted to do it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. And you know, what a fantastic! It's you know, if the politics hadn't uh, intruded, he could have been on you no. know Sunday night at the London Palladium. He he really could have amounted to something. Yeah, but it's a real shame. Were there other animal acts going around at the time? Yeah. Now, do you remember uh, Joyce Grenfell? Oh, yes, George Glenfell. Um, mm. Don't do it, George, or whatever George, it was called. George, don't do that. She used to don't say. do that, George. But, you know, in her original act, she said, George, don't do this. And she'd right. go on stage and kick a sheep's head off. <laughs> and it was a it was a brilliant move, Martin, because it made such a mess that she yeah. had to be top of the bill because mm. it would take hours to clean up. To this clean up, sheep yeah. carcass fountaining blood over the first half a dozen rows. Yeah. You know, do you remember, um, do you remember the guy, this was in the sort of 80s, who, his whole act was he had the mallet and the watermelons. Ah, uh, yes, do you I remember do. remember that? Uh, so he really copied that of, of Joyce. Yeah, well, Norman Wisdom, he did exactly that with badges. It was culling. <laughs> and it was approved by the Humane yeah. Society. Yes, well, it would be because um, badges, uh, do they spread uh, they sp tuberculosis? Yeah. And they spread yeah. about 20 foot when you go at them with a man. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah. So it's, it, it was it was really, if, if you say culling, it was um, it was the decent thing to do, really. Ab and, and of course, an entertainment. And, and remains so. Remains yes. so. It does. And there's an entertainment aspect to it, too, which is the, you know, which is the good thing. So much the really. better. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's that's gone now, hasn't it? Mm. That's, that's all. Go it's a real shame, actually, Matt. And it was, it was yeah. a, era, a golden era for entertainment. Nowadays, mm. you know, do you ever do you ever eat tofu? So I've eaten tofu. Yes. It's do you get it in the fried, in the pack with the in the pack when it comes in the water? Yes, that's right. It comes in the water, doesn't yeah. it? And do you get a knife and you'd like cut a slit and then you let it all drain out? Yeah, I, I always so. when I do that, I always say to myself, "This is halal tofu." Right? Yeah, halal tofu. I enjoy very, the ritual of it. Cleansing. Yeah. No, that's um, you know because that that in many ways is sort of replicating what what happens you know generally. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's and no one talks good. about the entertainment value of it. Is a great shame, in my opinion. Yes, I wasn't expecting you to uh, to raise that. That sort of yeah. come from out of nowhere, really. Yeah. Um, but Dora, can I say Healy's what an absolute pleasure it's been? We really want to outstay our welcome, Dora. God but no. yes, there's that. many. Yes, there's a lot of um, things that you've um, you've educated the teenagers about. Really, you know, the young people who listen to this or watch this or whatever the hell people do with this. Uh, you've really helped us out there. Well, Dora. I'm always happy to assist. You know, if I yes. can't be I the main. It's lovely to hear you. I have to say because it's some. It's months, maybe even years, since we've spoken. And it's good to know that we're both still around. Yeah, it's... well, listen, hit me up on OnlyFans. I'm always on there. Put in a request. Yeah. I'll get an eel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dora, can I, can I thank you heartily for... Um, for oh, we'll talk again soon because oh, I, yeah, I know I, no, you've got course, some then. interesting memories from the old days. Oh, yeah, unlike these ones. Yes. Do do your your listeners and viewers? Do they like the old days? I love the old days. Do they, they like? They it? love the old days. They love do good they? old fashioned British racism. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you.
Rick says, you can contact the local planning office to see if they've got planning permission. And if they do, they can tell you what time they should be working. Oh, Rick. How middle class do you think I am? Of course I've done that. Gemma, very excited to see Martin. Her comment on YouTube is just, Martin! Pablo was disappointed we there was no bear wrestling. Sorry. Right, come on. We need to sort this out. I've got a musical to write this week. That's what we're doing with the new format show. Uh, we're going to decide on a topic today, I think. Maybe. What we might do is see if we can see if a theme of evol emerges that we can turn into a longer form musical. That one day we'll, you know, get a stunning West End A-list cast to perform. So, what are we going to make a musical? I, I, I'm going to deliver it on Thursday. We need to pick a topic today. Uh, Pablo suggests, he says, uh, you know what you could use? Paul Williams is down and out as an inspiration lock down 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 god i love paul williams's songs bugsy malone and the muppet movie i mean what more what, what, what more do you want what more do you want uh yes with impending regional lockdowns uh you make a good point there there might be something in that the re the regionalism a good regional a regional musical might be a good thing. You know, like Oklahoma. We get, it's all the bees, isn't it? It's uh, Bolton, uh, Bur 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 Birmingham. I, I don't know. Bedford. All I know is Bedford is one of them. With all the... Uh, I didn't realise I'm not supposed to leave the city limits right now. No one told me until I heard it on the Today programme this morning. Okay. Um, Rick says, what about bootleggers across state lines? Bootlegging beer. Oh, that's quite a fun idea. You know, uh, I'm I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's Jake Yap on Instagram, but it's mainly vegan stuff. But it's kind of, well, I think it's fun. I've been doing some experiments with fermentation. <laughs> oh wow! Thanks. Tell me more. No, I have. It's been kind of good. Uh, I've 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 made ginger beer and I inadvertently made it alcoholic. I, like it was good and. Uh, there's sort of, I feel like there's kind of a YouTube series in this and I, I, I might have a go. Hashtag, will it beer? Can you beer it? You know what I'm trying right now? Rhubarb. And it's working. I'm so excited. I reckon another couple of days, I think it's going to be ready. It's very exciting to see what happens. It tasted pretty good. Uh, Pablo says, North Tyneside. I'm in a plague town. There you go. That's not bad. Uh, anyway, um, Rick suggests Dead Cat, the musical. Pablo says, publishing public information during the Eurovision. No bigger dead cat than that. Uh, oh, I love the Eurovision so much, I kind of miss it. Um, these are good suggestions. Thank you. Uh, I'll have a think. But you, it's not too late. You can still you can still send in suggestions. I think we'll, we'll conclude what we're going to do tomorrow morning. Uh, at 10 a.m. when we'll be live on the YouTube again. YouTube.com slash not today pod. Why not subscribe and click on the bell thing? I don't know where it is. There's a bell thing. If you click on that, it'll tell you when we've gone live and then you don't have to keep it in your head. You've got enough stuff in your head. Have you sorted out the boiler? No. Uh, we've got some uh, emails. Uh, Pat says, Hey, sensation seekers. <laughs> when teachers snap. Oh, yeah. Hashtag when teachers snap. We were covering this. An incident springs to mind. I was uh, a primary school child way back in the orange and brown wallpapered 70s. It was pretty grim. Yeah, that was that was the palette, wasn't it? Sort of mustard yellow, orange and brown. Okay, this is what almost became a news item. We were about 10 years old and we had a stand-in teacher rather briefly. Uh, my mother was reminding me of the time that she accosted one of my former cover supply teachers in the National Film Theatre. So you let my child get beaten up in your lesson, you're terrible. I hope that date went well for Mr. Levy. Anyway, this teacher of Pat's had a slightly jittery air of hostility about him, like he was made of coiled springs that someone wound way too tight. Oh, wow. 
Then without warning, he totally flipped his wig. All was quiet and something triggered him and he screeched and erupted. He fired a board duster at the head of a classmate and I mean he flung it with all his strength. Oh wow, that's terrifying. For those too young to have seen one of these dusters, they were a hard wooden bar about six inches long with metal ends and one side lined with some kind of rough felt to get the chalk off the board. They were substantial things. Until, that is, they hit the wall at 90 miles an hour. It exploded into fragments and left a deep dent in the wall. Blimey. By pure chance, the kid had dropped a pencil or something right then and had bent down to pick it up. Had he not done so, he would have been wheeled out on a stretcher to A&E for certain. No exaggeration. It could have killed him. But this was a primary school in the central belt of Scotland, so slightly put off. We got on with our work. See, it works. Did it work though, didn't it work though? Happy days, by which I mean miserable. All the best, you lovely lot. Hey, I think that's something you could take up with uh, this time next week. Uh, next Tuesday, I think we're, we're going to have Britain Awake again uh, with John Holmes. Britain's lightest and brightest breakfast show. Uh, where we're bigoted with John Holmes for money. I mean, I haven't told him this, but he's coming back. It'll work. It'll be fine. Don't forget it's not today at swanburst.com for your emails of when teachers break. And uh, I think we've got another one here. Alex. Dear Jake and the yapressed masses whose democratic voice is ground out of heel when it doesn't fit the latest narrative when it comes to song choice. Oh, the story about your German teacher reminded me of a similar incident. We had a very unpopular geography slash history teacher. Mate, it's all the same, you know? History, politics, it's all geography, you know? And like one, you know? At my primary school, who I will call Mr. R. He was clearly a man who hated teaching and indeed children. My clearest memory of him was being hit over the head with an atlas. What? For the crime of doing spelling corrections in class, you had to write out a word you'd spelt wrong five times. And I vaguely remember I was doing them to get o to get them over with while he was telling a different child off for something else. But he spotted me. Wow. Uh, it wasn't hard, but as a child, he rarely got into trouble at school. The shock stayed with me for a while. That's the thing. That's the thing my kid is dealing with right now is that, you know, there's this whole kind of collective. You should all be reading 20 minutes a night. And Spike's like, oh my God, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. Mm. It's bad. Anyway, this teacher once also asked the question, what did Victorian factories produce? And got the answer, clouds of dirty great smoke. And he gave the boy who said it detention. You should get a medal for that. It's a great joke. I learned later there were rumours among the parents that he had had an affair and ended up having a baby with the woman and had to get divorced. Shocking stuff for the time, no doubt. Luckily, uh, he was only there a few years. However, I now know quite a few teachers and so have a fairly good collection of stories from the other side of the trenches, as it were. So for balance, we'll share one you might enjoy. Oh, yeah, no, I'd like to hear that. That's a great idea. Uh, a class teacher at a school with quite a high proportion of children from other countries welcomed a newly arrived pupil from overseas. Within a week, they decided this child had earned had earned a special head teacher's award, which meant the head had to, with no prior warning, read their name out to the entire school during assembly. This child's name. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say that name out loud. Uh, very kindly, Alex has given me a link saying, here's how to pronounce it in case you're thinking the way you said it can't possibly be right. So here's the child's name. Congratulations and well done to... Azul. Pardon me? Azul. One more time? Azul. Azul. There's your award. Uh, well, <laughs> thanks very much, Alex. That's it for today. Uh, don't forget, we, any suggestions for what we could uh, write this week's musical about? Send them in, not today at swanburst.com. Or, of course, you can leave a voice message via the WhatsApp on 07862 032654. So much information now. Sorry about that. At Not Today Pod on Twitter. 
We'll be back tomorrow, 10 o'clock, live on the YouTubes. YouTube.com slash NotTodayPod. I hope I'll see you there. Bye-bye. This has been a Swanburst Media production.